guys, Colby here. Welcome to another Ray Challenges video. Guys, we've got some news about a new fusion coming on the 4th of August. So in a couple of days, starting, uh, it's going to be Wednesday. Okay, that's weird. I don't think they've ever started a fusion on a Wednesday. So I know some of you guys are brand new to the game. So if you are interested in knowing how to prepare for a fusion, then this video is for you. We'll go through the skills of this new champion, and then I'll give you some of my own tips on how to prepare for a fusion. If you are a low spender free to play player, if you want to be prepared in order to get into the fusion and actually finish it uh, all the way. So let's get started with this champion's skills and how he looks. So this champion is called Mother Cybelle. Look at her. Look at her. She looks, she looks mean. Always, I always, always give kudos to the designers uh, of this game. Just look at that scepter there with her, with the faces on there. It kind of reminds me of Game of Thrones. Uh, if you've ever watched the show. Uh, those faces there, those dead looking faces, and then her own face is, is just, she looks great. She looks great. But let's look at the skills. Do those skills match on how bad she, badass she looks? So, uh, by the Sabel A1, Mask of the Dread, of Dread, Tax All Enemies has a 25% chance of placing a 30% decrease speed debuff for two turns. That is great on an A1. That is great on an A1, the decrease speed. And also fill this champion's terminator by 15%. That's another great skill to have on an A1. 15% is, is a solid boost. It's also an AoE attack. I wonder what kind of uh, multiplayer that's going to have, but I think it's not going to be high. She's more of a support champion from what I've seen on her other skills. Plays a revive on death on her A2 and a 60% increased defense buff on all allies for two turns. On a six turn cooldown, that's a bit too much, right? I mean, the revive on death, it's, it's pretty solid, but um, yeah, if, if you plan on using her for clan boss, then. I don't know about that cooldown. If it's going to be reduced, we'll have to see when she's actually released. But overall, okay, this, this seems a bit weird. It's going to be useful for some areas of the game, but the long cooldown doesn't really help uh, to have a consistent revive on death. Of course, let's see what her HP does. Swaps HP with an ally, just one ally. That's weird. Uh, we usually have the uh, equalize HP on champions' uh, skill sets, but this one's a little bit different. This, if the champion's HP is equal to or higher, that the target after the swap fills this champion's terminator by 40%. Places 30% increased speed buff on this champion for two turns and places a block damage buff on the target ally for one turn. Um, yeah, so let me read through this again. If this champion's HP is equal to or higher than the target after the swap, how is it going to be equal when the swap happens? I guess she can do the swap regardless of the HP of the ally. She just uses it randomly. Deals this champion's turn by 40%, plays a 30% increased speed buff on this champion for two turns, and plays a block damage buff on the target ally for one turn. If this champion's HP is lower than the target after the swap, builds this target's turn by 40%, plays a 30% increased speed buff on them for two turns, and plays a block damage buff on this champion for one turn. Basically protects her if she is low after the swap. Also plays two 15% continuous heal buffs on this champion for two turns. Um, yeah, it's a cool skill. It's kind of weird. Six tier cooldown, very big, very big cooldowns on this champion. Uh, I'm already not liking her too much. A4, the Grave Walker passive, fully heals the ally with the lowest HP whenever this champion is killed. Okay, I guess, I guess that's cool. Um, I guess that's cool. Heals all allies by 20% of their max HP and fills the terminators by 15% whenever this champion is revived. So. Okay, so when she is killed and you have a revive on death on her because of her own A2 skills, she will heal everybody and fill the turners by 15% when she is revived. So hmm, I guess that's cool. That's cool. Her kit overall seems all around the place. I, I'm not saying she's going to be a bad champion. I never say do not go for a fusion, guys. I never say do not go for a fusion. I always recommend going for a fusion if you have the resources. It's a fun way to get some materials. And then who knows on how strong uh, that champion can be in the future, in future kind of events. So this champion uh, will be a legendary support force in the Knight Revenant. So if you don't have a Knight Revenant, uh, you're having issues with the Knight Revenant faction, she's probably going to help. But the second part of the video, how to prepare for a fusion. You guys want to do this fusion let's say you want to get your first legendary or you want to have her uh, in addition to all your other champions the way to prepare i always say is get ready for all kinds of events these fusions that parian puts out are always around the same idea okay prepare all your resources so start up 
by saving lots of food champions. That being said, have level 40s, level 30s ready to go, ready to get ranked up. That means you've got a champion training uh, tournament going on right now. Do as much of it as you can. If you've got an XP boost going, then start up farming your champions to their maximum level, but do not rank them up yet because that's easy points for a champion training event or a champion training tournament that comes. Next up, silver. Save up all your silver. Do not use your silver for upgrades right now. I know we've got the CVC going, but just save it, guys. The CVC is almost over. We've got the announcement today, so save your silver. You're going to have at least one or two artifact enhancement events for this fusion. So save your silver so you can, you know, level up your items then. And the best way to do that is level artifacts and not accessories when you're doing those artifact enhancement events because artifacts take less silver to get to maximum level compared to accessories. Like uh, getting this level 15 to 16 needs 39,300 per upgrade. And that's not the same for artifacts. So be careful of that. If you are tied on silver, level up only your artifacts and not your um not your accessories next up we'll have um arena events so be sure to have your arena team ready and always place a one person on defense so you get attacked all the time but be careful of not dropping a lot so when you have a single person on defense you'll get attacked a lot but that means you'll be finding easier um easier opponents against you you won't be near the top especially if you're in gold four if you're not in gold four the lower you are the more reasonable the teams are going to be, but who knows? It's always random, the refreshing of the pages and what you get. So the um, the arena events usually come on the weekends during a fusion. So that's when you'll have the most amount of time to be active and be doing those events. Next up, we'll have summoning events. So save your shards. I know we just had a Geomancer summoning event, but that's always on purpose. We're also going to have a 10x coming this weekend we don't know the champions yet but it's probably going to be something good to make you want to summon so me personally I haven't summoned anything but i've also have zero sacred shards so i'm in a bit of a trouble the sacred shards give lots of points for summoning events for summoning tournaments it's all about the quality of the champion that you summon so have that in mind also when you're trying to get some more points going and then uh, finally it's we're going to have a uh, different dungeon tournaments going on throughout the fusion that being said each and every single one of those tournaments is highly highly recommended to participate in and get uh, all the points needed in order for you to secure um get all the points you need in order for you to secure that fusion uh champion that will be required we still don't know exactly the requirements for the fusion in order to finish the fusion but if it's a classic fusion it's going to be like razen is right here guys if you have Razin, I have I have don't have Razin anymore, but it's exactly like, like Relic Keeper, but instead of rare champions, it's gonna be epic champions that you'll need to take to 50. You have four rare champions right here to take to 40. Fully ascend them. So having enough potions is also something very, very crucial. So be careful. If you're running low on potions, start farming up. We have a week until the fusion actually starts. There's lots of time to allocate your resources correctly. So if you're planning on farming masteries for, let's say, your B team or something, don't do that because that's going to be a waste of energy. You can use that instead for farming either potions, farming um, food to prepare, or just in general, uh, improving your teams. If you have all that already, then you don't need to, to watch this video so far. Um, I just wanted to give you guys my heads up in terms of uh, event preparation when fusions come. I always try to be prepared um, as much as possible for fusions. So I can limit my spending. I've been playing the game for over two years and I've tried to limit my spending so that I don't um, actually spend on each and every single fusion in order to make a video for you guys uh, and, and have the champion available. This was the video, guys. I hope you found it helpful. I hope that you are going for the fusion. It's always great to go for them, even if you think at the moment that they might not be useful. There were some fusions that were okay, very, very bad, but they're having a... Um, they're having a planned rebalance soon. So let's say Pixneal is going to be rebalanced. She was a very bad fusion. Let's hope for the best and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I, I don't think I don't think this uh, this fusion is one of the better ones, Mother Cybele. So I'm on the edge on this just through her kit. It looks very all over the place for me personally. But you, you might be in a position where you need a champion for an increased defense buff. Maybe you need that decrease speed debuff on the A1. That A1 is an AoE attack, so you can give her a stun set 
can have additional control on that A1. She can help with the swap HP in difficult situations, so she can help in the Doom Tower also. Um, there's lots of protection provided by, the, by her if you have a reviver also with her. There's this situation where you can use her to abuse those revives, to abuse her kit for maximum healing and also turn return manipulation for your own team. So have that in mind. Do not think she's a total waste. I think that passive has potential as long as she's a part of a team also has a reviver. These were my thoughts for this, um, for this fusion, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Leave a like down below. Comment always to help the YouTube algorithm boost the video. And guys, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.